Welcome to the Blog 50 Business Math Business 135 Fun with Excel and Math. We're in Chapter 9 Compound Interest Future Value and Present Value. We've been doing lots of calculations for future value. Now we want to look at present value. And future value, we, we got that down pretty well. We put something in the bank, we know what it's worth on the day we put in the bank, and then it grows to some future value. But present value is a great calculation because you can say, hey, if I need $100,000 for my daughter's education in 18 years, so this would be future value of 100000 we do our calculation and it will tell us how much to put in the bank today. Similarly, if you want to be a millionaire when you retire, how much would you have to put in the bank today? So, and this is the PDF, page 20. There's some great uh, hints about future value here. And also, if you scroll down for present value, the way to think of it for this chapter, the amount that must be deposited today in order to receive the maturity value at a future time. Here is our formula. We are calculating present value, which is P. So we take the future value and we divide it by that. So 1 plus the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods raised to the number of compounding periods times our years. Remember, that's just um, in the last calculation, we multiplied this by P and got FE. Here it's just um, future value divided by that number. Here are our variables. Again, the way to think of this is present value. How much do you have to deposit today in order to get a certain amount in the future? Luckily, in Excel, there is a function instead of FV. It's PV for um, present value. And it's the same. It needs to know the period interest rate, total number of compounding periods. Instead of um, present value, it needs to know the future value. That's pretty cool there. All right, let's go over to Excel. And let's look at, um, we have two examples for present value. If you wanted to have $100,000 for your dollar education in 18 years, how much would you have to invest today if you could earn an annual rate of 12% compounded monthly? So here it is. Here's the details. Oh, look at this. Our future value is what we have this time. But we don't know what our present value is. We don't know what the principal is. We don't know what the present value of the amount that we need to deposit in the bank today. Annual rate, 12%. Oh, monthly. Monthly is compounding periods. Uh, how many compounding periods per year? 12. Years, 18. So let's go ahead and do our calculation. Uh, total number of compounding periods is going to be equals our compounding periods per year times our years. Enter. And our int uh, period interest rate is going to be equals to 12% divided by 12 months. So each month we're going to get 0.01 or 1%. Now let's go ahead and do our math here. You can see there's a little symbols there for the formula. And then uh, with all of the numbers plugged in, or our simple one right here, this is one we're going to do. So equals the future value divided by. And the trick here is we have a couple of calculations to do in the denominator. So we need to put um, parentheses so that we force all those calculations to be done first. We're going to type a parenthesis for the whole thing. But remember, we have another thing, the um, 1 plus the period interest rate. Uh, let's see, you could see it here. 1 plus that period interest rate. That needs to be done first, so we're going to need a second parenthesis. And you can see a black parenthesis and a green parenthesis. I love that color code. It helps me when I'm doing a complicated one like this. 1 plus, and I'm going to click on my period rate because I've already calculated it. Notice there's a green parenthesis there, so to close this off, I'm going to type another green parenthesis. And then we need our caret. Shift 6 and click on our 216. That's 216 months before your daughter turns, goes to college. And then we need one more parenthesis because all of this needs to be done in the denominator before it does whatever's in before divided by this. So we close parentheses. 11,656 and 91 cents. Wow, that's pretty awesome.
hey, just out of curiosity, what if you couldn't get a 12%? What if you could only get uh, 7.5? Sign up for some 18-year CD. 7.5. That's why we do it in Excel. We simply change that, and look at that. Everything updated, the period rate and this. So in this case, if we can only get 7.5 for monthly, uh, we'd put... Uh, Twenty-six thousand thirty-three dollars in today, but in 18 years we'd have accrued a bunch of interest and have 100k. Let's try something different. Let's try uh, 365 here. Wow, a th um, let's undo. Oh, not much difference. All right, so there you go. That's the beauty of Excel, of course. All right, now let's do uh, this same calculation here. 7.5. Notice this was actually linked up there, so that changed. But we want to practice with our present value function, because that will probably be easier for you in the long run. Equals PV. Open and the rate. You click on that period rate, comma. Number of periods. Wow, 6,570. Comma. There's no payment. We're not paying anything in like every month. Next chapter we'll get to do that. So we put a comma. And then the future value, we're going to put a minus on this 100K here and close parentheses. Enter. There it is. Uh, $25,927.62. And we're not rounding because we're not going to use this in any subsequent calculation. So if we wanted 100000 for our daughter in 18 years and we could earn 7.5% annual, annual interest, Compounded 365 times a year, we would need to invest 25,927.62 cents today. Okay, let's look at another example. Again, present value is just um, if we want this in the future, how much do we have to put today? Present value. If you wanted, here we're on the sheet tab, PV2. If you wanted to have a million dollars when you retire in 40 years, how much would you have to invest today if you could earn an annual rate of 10% compounded monthly? There we have a million. That'd be great. When you retire to have a million. 10%, 12 com, uh, months in a year and 40 years. I've already done the multiplication and the division here to get the total number of periods, 480 months. 480 months till I retire. Wow. Uh, and the period interest rate, 10 divided by 12 is 0 0.008333333. All right, let's see if we can do our calculation equals the million dollars divided by, and we need to put two parentheses here because we're going to have um, some a couple different calculations in the denominator. Open parentheses, open parentheses. Notice the black and the green. So we're going to do the green one now. One, one plus, whoops, one plus the period interest rate. And then close parentheses, and you can see that there's a green close parentheses there. And then caret, shift six, and we want our 480, and then close parentheses so that everything in the denominator is forced to be calculated before it does the division here. And then enter. Wow, you got to be kidding me. 18, if I had 18,000, I put it in the bank and just let it sit for 40 years. Yeah, that's the power of compound interest. And the variable that has the most effect on these kinds of calculations is e years, time. Time is what matters the most. Let's do our present value calculation. How much do we need to be a millionaire? Equals PV, open parentheses. The rate, period rate, comma, NPER, which is total number of compounding periods, 480, comma, comma, minus the future value. Close parentheses. Wow, that is amazing. Let's go ahead and change this. Let's see. Uh, maybe we can't earn 10% uh, um, if you're investing it. At, so let's just say 8%. Uh, wow, 41,000. So still, 41,000 to a million, that's amazing. Again, time is the biggest factor. Now, what if we uh, started late in life and uh, we only had 20 years till we retired? Ooh, 202,000. That is the variable that matters. So to be a millionaire, put this much in and let it sit for 20 years. That's still $800,000 worth of interest. 
All right. Um, there's another sheet tab here, and it's in the handwritten notes. Uh, you won't have to do this on the opportunity, but you can uh, see there's an example of future value and present value together to value a business. And there are no homework templates in this um, workbook. All right. See you next chapter.